And um, now for our last uh, presentation for this conference, um, I would like to introduce Anna Vladimirova Kurikova, yeah. uh, who will be talking about the right to be forgotten. Anna, the floor is yours. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. It's always a challenge to be the last one, especially on Friday, because you have a feeling like everybody thinking about leaving home and uh, having a dinner or finalizing with their uh, uh, work in order to uh, switch to the mood of the weekend. But I'm trying. Uh, I really will try to be as fast as I can and entertaining as I can. So um, I'm a, a originally a lawyer. Uh, however, lately I also passed to cybersecurity field, and I have a cert I'm a certified data protection officer and cyber certified cybersecurity officer. Uh, but I work for a law firm, and I deal a lot with uh, only almost without data protection for several last years. Uh, so, uh, of course, the GPR is looks like something new, uh, but to my opinion, the most uh, the most important and most popular thing about GDPR are penalties, unfortunately. And penalties really uh, attracted attention both of companies and both of data subjects, natural persons. And uh, to be honest, when, we, uh, 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 when I, as a consultant, helped companies to comply with the GDPR, uh, and a lot of also uh, professionals, we were waiting that regulator will be imposing fines after the 25th of May. However, that didn't happen. But what had, did happen is that actually natural persons, data subjects, were very active about submitting different kind of requests to the companies. And among them is a request uh, in order to use the right to be forgotten. Maybe one of the reasons to, uh, to, uh, to submit requests was also like you have a feeling that now your privacy really has a value and the value of like 20 millions, uh, 20 million uh, euros and uh, uh, you feel like this is something valuable and you would like to request uh, to uh, ensure the compliance. And uh, I can imagine that companies also were afraid because even if you were in a three comma club, you know, 20 million is uh, an impressive amount of money, nonetheless. And of course, if you're not compliant with the right to be forgotten as a company, if you do not delete the data, you can be subject theoretically to, theoretically to, such, a, to such a big fine. Our, so what usually, uh, uh, when we analyze this request, what usually uh, people are waiting from that request? They can be waiting for the fact that their data, the information can be uh, pseudonymized. So, like, we have John Smith, and we have birth date, and we have address. But persons can be awaiting that now we have, uh, we will change the data, modify in a way that it's going to be some kind of numbers, range of numbers, or uh, this is going to be like John from London. And well, this will not be personal data to uh, the uh, to the biggest amount of people. Or uh, a lot of actually uh, people were waiting. Uh, that the companies, uh, uh, controllers, will delete their data completely. So, like, person is completely, will be completely absent and non-existent for a certain company. And, uh, uh, of course, there was a, uh, okay, some kind of problems with formats. But, uh, this was a huge challenge because companies, as far as I understood, were not waiting for such a big amount of requests. And our... Uh, the first thing that uh, data subjects need to understand and companies need to understand that data uh, should not be deleted in all of the cases. This right has its limitations. And some of these limitations are very clear. And as soon as you uh, get acquainted with limitations, it's more or less clear that, okay, in this case, data shall be deleted. In this case, data shall not be deleted. And for instance, it's like uh, if uh, uh, we uh, the processing the data processing uh, and the activities carried out with the data are based on the consent and the consent is drawn, okay, data should be deleted. If the law requires to delete the data, okay, really we should delete the data. If the processing is unlawful, okay, we should delete the data. But there are some points that uh, were subject and are still subject to conflicts. To our, and to some disputes. 
And one of the uh, reasons and one of the uh, basis in order to uh, use uh, the right to be forgotten is uh, that there is that the controller, the company, the holder of the data does not have any legitimate interest to hold the data. And this is a, a very big question because what does it mean when the company doesn't has legitimate interest? This is a very, this is a very, very, uh, from one point of view, this is a very comfortable, very convenient basis to use because you can say, okay, uh, it is a total legitimate interest to develop our business. And in order to develop the business, we need the, this and this and this and this data. But uh, a natural person can say, no, legitimate interest is an interest for my privacy and I don't want you to uh, process the data in a certain way. And I want you to delete the data or at least to minimize it um, to make it uh, to make to make it accessible to uh, 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 only to a limited amount of persons. So here, basically, in order to imagine you're a company and you receive such a request, I want to delete the data uh, based on the because you don't you do not have no more no legitimate interest to process the data. And before deleting the data. The company should, shall really evaluate, of course. So from one point of view, you have like a possibility to get the, to get uh, uh, to have a, a regulator imposing a fine on you, like up to 20 million. But however, from the other hand, you have maybe also legitimate interest, and if you delete the data, your company will suffer from the fact that you deleted the data. And in this case, we should um, evaluate what is the balance. Who has priority company or natural person. And before doing that, before taking final decision, we also need to take into consideration the exceptions because uh, these are additional limitations to the right to be forgotten. And these are actually the cases where the data subject and the companies, uh, uh, and the, I think the data subjects uh, should be educated about the fact that such exceptions exist. And uh, um, for instance, this is right of freedom of expression information. Uh, so that this is the cases and very often received by, mass, uh, by media, by the way. So uh, by the way, uh, I gave you, I, uh, I participated in a program or I gave an interview and I know that this was shown on the TV and I want you to delete the program or the um, uh, video. And in many cases it's not possible. So it is the case where you check in and you can never leave actually because you need, as a data subject, you also should be responsible and should understand that once you engage in some kind of public activity that is subject really to public intention, well, you should understand that uh, you cannot um, come up with an idea to delete your data completely uh, because there is no more legitimate interest or it's not, mo it's not so actual anymore. And of course, there are other exceptions like law requires to retain the data uh, or for instance, data are necessary in order to, um, uh, to uh, establish or uh, uh, defense uh, legal claims. So basically here we have an interest of data subject of, a, a simple, uh, of uh, one person and we have an interest of, uh, of a whole society. So what is more? Uh, what is the priority? Because we used to think about privacy as something very intimate. And I guess this is one of the problems or questions that we should ask while analyzing and going through the articles of the GDPR that actually privacy is not always so intimate. It's a compromise, it's a deal be between the individual and between the society. Because as a part of the society, individual is not completely isolated. So as soon as you're born, as soon as you start to work, you need to pay taxes because you're part of, of a certain state and you need to uh, comply with all the regulations and be part of the society. So the same thing actually is with the data and with the, uh, your privacy, this is not, which is not so intimate conception anymore. So our uh, we need to establish the balance by thinking also about interests of both parties. And here we have uh, some uh, certain specific examples that I faced uh, too while uh, uh, reviewing the requests uh, uh, for the right to be forgotten and I also represented both sides, the companies and the data subjects in different cases. So uh, here maybe we could also discuss 
For instance, we have a, a very popular case with some kind of public registries. So, or databases. For instance, we have business registers. And in business registers, we have information not only about the company, but we also can have information about the board. We, have, we can have ID numbers of the board, and we have uh, addresses of the board. And I guess this is a never ending story about also about Latvian register that they used to be uh, an address of board members, but now it is removed because, uh, um, well, at a certain point of time, maybe because of the GPR, it was evaluated that, well, you don't really necessarily need to know the address of the board member. However, uh, how do you think? Do we need to know ID number of a board member or company? Is it, uh, is it, does it concern some kind of interest of society or not? Yeah, yeah. No. So why yes, I know. Maybe he is simultaneously a member of uh, the board in Apple or in, in the competitor company. There are those type of interests. And without the ID number, I can't really find him. That's why. So there is also was no opinion? Uh, yes, I said no. Oh. And uh, the reason is I think that uh, why should it matter to me as an individual whether this person is a board member or not of a company? Well, the, the case is, uh, uh, and the, the, uh, the basis that usually lawyers use is that in order to uh, conclude uh, entering the contract with a certain entity, uh, you need to be sure that the agreement is signed by an authorized party. And uh, in order to be sure this person is really authorized, you need to know not only name and surname, because it can be like John Fmees or something like that, but also an ID code. And you actually have the right to request to show the ID document in order to be sure. Um, I'm uh, not wondering know your client, know your business databases. Uh, what is the uh, issue, the latest issue is that uh, a lot of persons uh, who are subject to certain sanctions and are, uh, are indicated in certain sanctions lists are included in the databases like WorldCheck, uh, uh, who are used by financial entities in order to check whether this uh, potential person, uh, whether this potential client uh, is a potential, uh, has, is a potentially risky person. And the sanctions list are not always correct. Uh, because uh, there are a lot of a lot of mistakes made because there are a lot of persons with the same names all over the world. However, these mistakes are sometimes uh, rectified. However, uh, how, so how is it done? Usually, a new list is adopted. However, the previous list actually still was in force for some time, and it is shown in this ML database. So the bank says, "I cannot open a bank account for you because." You were in the database, okay, okay, you were there for one week, but you were there, and we know that you probably can be a potentially dangerous person. And we will not open a bank account for you because we have an obligation towards our clients to inform them that you are a potentially risky person. But the person says, hey, actually, I cannot open a bank account, I cannot carry out a business, this impacts my personal life and my business life very seriously, so here, you need to go through case by case and to really understand what is the balance between these cases. Because it can really have an, uh, impact, in, an impact on the whole range of financial institutions uh, or, or a serious impact on the one single person that actually can have serious troubles in his personal or professional life. The same with the criminal records. To which extent we should open up the rec criminal records? Could employers see the criminal records of their potential employees? So, for instance, if a person uh, works, uh, would like to work as a cashier, but has some problems, issues with uh, related to financial crimes before, or an accountant, can we, uh, or and shall uh, such employer have a right to, uh, on, the, uh, on the basis of legitimate, the legitimate interest, process the data of a potential employee? Or should the potential employee have the right to 
uh, to be uh, forgotten and to actually and to enjoy uh, the right to privacy uh, uh, or uh, shall it request uh, uh, the previous employers to delete such information because you know this criminal record is not actual anymore. So the same is actual with search engines. A lot of uh, requests were submitted to Google, to Bing, to Yahoo uh, about right to be forgotten. And uh, many of them still keeping the information because if uh, you were included in the list then for, for, for a certain reason, you really uh, need to try very hard in order to be excluded from the list. Which is what is very interesting about Google, for instance, if you're trying, if you submit right to be forgotten requests and you go through American procedure, then, and if you don't get deleted because Google says you're potentially, you were, you're a really dangerous person or you're a criminal or you're really com related to some kind of criminal offense or political scandals, we will not delete you from uh, the search results. But what Google does, it includes this person in the Lumen database. And this is a database which is publicly accessible database for the list of persons uh, which tried to use the procedure for right to be forgotten and were denied to use that. So you were in the Google results and you can see that you were in the results in the list of persons that were trying to, be, uh, to uh, use the right to be forgotten and failed to do that. So is it a legitimate interest? So I, as an individual, maybe you're a your candidate for political elections. I would like to see that you are not only were involved with some kind of briberies, but you also tried to hide that. Would be this a legitimate interest in this certain case? Well, case to case, uh, case, to case uh, examination should be carried out. So the same also is available for any publicly available materials, not only search uh, engines, everything that we sh see through the social media. You post information, the information is posted about you. And it should be evaluated, whether you're a public figure, whether you're a public person, whether you have an impact on the society, or you're really a simple uh, individual that really doesn't have an impact on society and you're more like a private person and not a public figure. The same also is for marketing materials published or materials used for security purposes. A lot of companies care about video surveillance or also employee uh, monitoring for also for security purposes. You know, like also for pharma uh, sphere, it's very important to actually to monitor in place what they're doing with the data because exfiltrations are not very welcome and uh, employers would like to carry audits of for their in place as, uh, as much as they can for the purpose. And they store the data. So would the employees have the right to request this data to be deleted? Or should the company store the data in order to prove that maybe it will discover in, a certain, in, in two years that there was a huge exfiltration of data and now it is subject to some kind of fines but because of the employee, but data is deleted and there is no way to prove that th this, this specific employee was, was actually guilty. So, uh, uh, so actually, if we know that even, uh, even if we have potential to, to apply the right to be forgotten, we need to carry out evaluation to understand whether the person is simply a private person, whether it's a public figure, what is the scale of processing? What is impact on the controller and impact of individual person? And sometimes this is a very hard task because we need to uh, carry out a very, very uh, detailed and uh, argumented examination on who has the more priority and really to think about all of the stakeholders involved. Not only controller maybe, but also third parties, members of general public who may be influenced by the fact that the deed is deleted. So privacy is not so private and not the, not the issue that it is related to one single person anymore, especially this person has a certain impact on third parties, not only company. So our, I guess we're, uh, we're concluding with the, same, uh, with the same question that was analyzed well when, the company, uh, when the conference was open, so what is privacy? Should we give up the right to the privacy and really go to the path that or uh, maybe the word privacy is not so correct. Yeah, so this should, there should be compromise between the interest of the public 
of the general public and individual. And uh, privacy is not a very uh, correct uh, notion to be used. And because it's Friday and this is last presentation, I, you can see your funny picture at the end. Uh, and you know, sometimes pictures also help to remember the information in a better way, as uh, I think as much as can be shown by some kind of marketing materials and a number of cats present in that materials. So uh, thank you and uh, have a nice Friday and I hope you enjoyed the conference. Thank you, Anna. Uh, I'm sure there will be some questions. Yeah. Oh, we have plenty. We'll start with Alessandro. It's not a question. It's uh, two comments. Uh, the first one about the public register. Yeah. Uh, you know, there is the many case that was decided by the European Court of Justice mm. uh, that clarified that uh, if uh, there are p um, business information in public register. Uh, this is not an issue of right to be forgotten. And I think that in many cases is important because clarify the point on the register and the cases come from, from Italy and uh, is consistent with the, the Italian regulation and also the common opinion of the Italian doctrine. And uh, only a details about the Lumen database. Yeah. And the Lumen database is a research project. Yeah. It's not a uh, Google uh, initiative. Yes, it's a yes. background claim center initiative yeah. and involves many other uh, um, academic institutions. And was created initially uh, in order to consider the, the takedown of uh, copyright content. And then it was suggested, I was also part of this kind uh, of uh, project, uh, um, it was suggested also to extend to the right to be forgotten, but there was a lot of concern in terms of compliance with European Union uh, regulation. So in this sense, the, the decision was not to extend this project uh, to the removals concerning the uh, data, um, data protection issues. <laughs> and the final comment, uh, Unfortunately, yesterday I was in, in Pisa and I apologize not to be here because there was a conference on artificial intelligence, of course, <laughs> at the University of Pisa. And uh, I think that is interesting your point on uh, the privacy and uh, or privacy. We have not a common idea about <laughs> the mo <laughs> this word. Um, I, I think that from my perspective, there is a clear distinction between what is the right to privacy that uh, affected relationship, for instance, uh, between the media and private life and data protection that is completely different uh, uh, um, section in terms of safeguards. And the European Union uh, in the, the Charter of Fundamental Rights clarified this distinction. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there is a, a some confusion on that because for instance in US uh, they use privacy to cover a broader uh, range of interest. So uh, I think that is, is very important also to point out that when we talk about data protection, it's something different from, from, from right to privacy. The right to privacy is uh, only a specific part of data, data that are referred to personal life, uh, private facts, uh, and so on, it cannot be revealed, and so on. Sorry, it's not a question, it was only yeah, <laughs> an add-on. Yes, thank you for the comments. There are some questions from back there. Hi, uh, I wanted to ask, maybe it's not that relevant to the uh, presentation, but uh, what uh, should a company do with, uh, for example, if you have numerous uh, retentions for specific data, mm -hmm. and uh, w well, like five different um, agreements, and one of these agreements ends up, for example, uh, in uh, due of 10 years, but uh, you have to, or whether you have to actually uh, retain this, uh, and is it a legitimate interest to retain this data longer than these 10 years because the client still is active for other agreements? Or uh, with the, actually with the contracts, uh, at least in Latvia and maybe in other states, uh, it is a bit much easier because many contracts shall be kept not only based on the legitimate interest but mainly based on the statutory requirements. So many laws about accounting requires you to keep the contracts within a certain period of time even after the contract has uh, expired or has been terminated because uh, 
it is necessary for accounting purposes or for tax purposes. Yes, so uh, it is it, it is completely legitimate and it is legal. And I would say uh, even that it is, it is not legal to delete the information from the contract. The other thing, uh, the con delete the contract. The other thing is that you may have some kind of information that was collected because you had certain type of relationship with the client. And here you actually need to evaluate uh, whether do you, whether you need that data, maybe you need this for other projects that they, that uh, because you said that you have all the rest for contracts that are still enforced with the same client. Maybe a bit elaborating this, uh, um, not to take everyone's time, uh, that uh, the agreement is um, terminated because um, it was um, settled, everything's fine, and uh, there's no need for this agreement to be there. Uh, for example, it was archived or, I don't know, obfuscated or whatever it was, but it's not uh, relevant anymore to the client. And there is no legal aspect to uh, store it anymore. Mm -hmm. But it is, in, uh, for example, uh, saying it very clearly in an archive box mm -hmm. where, I, I don't know, one agreement, the second, third, and whatever. This particular is terminated because the uh, retention has come and uh, there is no actual need to uh, store it. Is it okay to store it uh, longer than it was said well, legally? Yeah. Yeah. Y yes, it's legally because according to the accounting requirements, at least in Latvia. Yeah, but for example, these seven years are passed okay. Already. So if these seven years uh, had lapsed, then you need to destroy the contracts unless you need them. I don't know. Maybe you're involved in some kind of legal proceedings mm -hmm. with the client. So yes, because usually the storage, uh, this data retention requirement for the contracts that has already expired is the same as uh, state use of limitation. So if there is no legal conflict that is uh, active, then you won't need the data so anymore. Uh, meaning that, uh, for example, if it's an uh, archive box with yeah. these uh, yeah. numerous documents, I should rip open this archive, take this document out, destroy it, really? Like um, yes. I have uh, been sealing, uh, for example, numerous documents that uh, has no need to be processed anymore since they are in this archive. Still, still, you uh, you advise to take it out. Well, mm -hmm. if you don't have any retention requirements, statutory retention requirements that requires okay. you to store the data, then you can delete that. Okay, thanks a lot. Any questions, Lisa? Thanks for a really interesting presentation. I had a question around, is there sort of a halfway house? So if a person, you know, there's maybe there's certain reasons that various aspects about an individual can't be deleted, can you still then, you know, delete the parts that can? Or like, is there some flexibility in the right to be forgotten that people can pick and choose exactly which aspects they want to be forgotten? Um, and would that pose problems? You could almost start to like, people could recreate them themselves almost just by choosing exactly what they delete and do companies need to sort of allow that flexibility in terms of individuals that want very specific sets of data to be deleted about them but retain everything else. But I, I guess this is actually the, the difference bec uh, between the right to deletion of the data and right to be forgotten because automatically right to be forgotten usually means that I need to you to delete as much data as you can delete for instance if unless law requires you to retain the data. But right to deletion, it means that you can actually require to delete a certain set of data that uh, you would like to be deleted, unless the exceptions apply. Yeah, so if you are, you know, one of those named people where you can't fit under the right to be forgotten, yeah. do you think we need maybe, you know, a right for, for deletion up to the point at which you then can't be sure, forgotten? Sure, you have, the, you have this right. The other thing is that Will you be satisfied by the fact that a certain set, of, only a certain set of uh, information related to your personal data will be deleted? Maybe this will not correspond to the purpose that you, why you're asking and this right to be forgotten. So yes, it can be, it can be, cons uh, it can be compromise if both parties are okay with that. Great, thanks.
not really a question, just a short comment. I was amused to learn that um, uh, some people were trying to be forgotten, and as a matter of fact, their names were listed. It reminds me of the Stauder judgment, which is a leading mm -hmm. case of European law. So as German uh, citizens uh, believe it was unfair for um, a re an EC, re EC regulation to require people who wanted to buy butter at discounted rate to reveal their name. So he challenged the regulation at the European level. Uh, it wasn't an easy case because there could be a possible conflict between EU law and the national constitution, which the Court of Justice made, eventually sidestepped. But Mr. Stauder was correct. So the Court of Justice said that if you read all the language versions of the regulations, as a matter of fact, there was no obligation to reveal your name. So Mr. Stauder was successful. Mm -hmm. And thanks to that, now we all know, if we will forever will remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is actually one of the cases, uh, the similar cases uh, not, uh, uh, at the moment uh, in, in the UK courts. And this is also a, a very, a very uh, I'm not of course a specialist in, in the uh, UK law, but uh, as much as I've, I have read uh, about the case is that a person whose identity is not discovered tries to remove his name from Google search results. Uh, and uh, the reason why the person does not uh, does not say his her maybe name and surname and in details to the public and to the respondent is uh, because he is or he just, she is afraid of the fact that he or she will be remembered. Yeah, yeah, for 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 exercising the right to be forgotten. So. Yeah. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, with the Google. Yeah, so, yes, so he 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 became the like a public figure. Yes, but uh, we should remember this purpose limitation and storage limitation. Uh, yes, so so the amount of the data that we process shall be limited to the purpose purpose that we have. Okay, he's for famous, but we know only a certain amount of details. We don't have, of course, I don't know, ID copy of that person because. Nobody needs that for media purposes. Okay, thank you, Anna. Thank you. A round of applause. So we have reached the conclusion of our two-day conference. I think that uh, what I have taken out of this are more questions and no answers. <laughs> I think we can all agree. I want to extend my gratitude to the speakers who have come out of their way to, to contribute to this. And I want to thank all the participants as well uh, for attending. I hope they've uh, enjoyed the conference as much as I have. So thank you very much and a round of applause to everybody here.